high peak volume candle analysis. One of my favorite things to look for when we're on a high or a low is looking for the high volume peak. And basically what that comes down to is looking at when the market is continuing to the upside or continuing to the downside and finding where the largest point in volume is in that move. A lot of times you'll find that it actually isn't at the point when it is that makes it a lot better. But we're looking for a big chunk of volume coming in while the market is moving in one obvious direction. And it can't just be like a little bit of volume. It's got to be the biggest volume that we've seen in a long time, right? It's breaking above a lot of previous candles are standing really really high and it's after a move has been going on for a while now at the end of this move we've got this drive to the downside and we've got a big big chunk of volume down here now that's very important but we need to see where did that volume actually come in we know that the volume came in on this candle right there but what what price, right? Where did the volume come in? Yeah, that was the biggest chunk of volume, but was there a specific price or was it all over the place? And that's where we can zoom in a little bit closer here. And then we can go in and use the order flow volume profile tool right here. And we're gonna narrow in on just that candle and we're gonna see where did all of that volume take place. So if we make this uh, a little bit easier to see here, we can see that the majority of the volume took place in, well, a couple different places actually. It was a nice little bell curve there, but we've got the big chunk of volume there, and it looks like there was another one here maybe another smaller one here and you can see how you can really get lost down the rabbit hole realistically the largest two are going to be those right there so what i want to see is how does the market respond to that area when we've got that giant blow off move and we've got a big big continuation how does the market respond to this zone so we can mark that area up right there and i'll mark the other one up uh, right there but instead since it is the second one it's a little bit lower let's make that dash dot that way we can see that it's a little bit different so those are the two big volume nodes specifically on that candle and those give us the price points that we want to really pay attention to so if we zoom back out again that's going to be the area that we're really going to want to watch in terms of how the market fights over it this was the largest chunk of volume we broke through it you can see very obviously the market treated it as resistance the first time it came back around but let's see what happens happens the next time it came back up to that area it's increasing in price we're starting to kind of encroach into it running into a little bit of a brick wall rejects back off of it we see volume increasing while the market is pulling down that would potentially suggest buyers are coming in on the pullback it might also just suggest that we saw some profit taking either way it rejects again and continues back down and let's see if they come back to it yep rejecting off okay oh now now see they broke through and once they broke through that area all of the sudden things get a little bit different here now buying is coming in underneath the candles we're seeing bull engulfing bars everything is starting to shift a little bit this area continues to be a major zone of interest that it continues to fight around and if we go forward a little bit further uh, we can end up seeing that that's the the giant point of interest that the sellers were really trying to defend sellers were attempting to get it to rotate down try to get Again, failed tried again failed tried again failed tried again failed and when it finally broke above that area it was game over all of those sellers got out of the way and that was the point of interest where that really started taking place now the cool thing is you can do this on any peak volume point any large area of volume that shows up on the chart especially if it's standing way above everything else those are going to be the zones of interest that you're going to want to pay attention to keep in mind there is some context here you are obviously going to see large volume on big news announcements, right? Um, what I want to see are not volume on news announcements. Those make sense. I want to see volume in an area that's not just off of news. That's, that's showing something else, another reason for that volume. So if we were to look at all of the major points in volume, the ones that stand out, we've got big one right there. We've got the next one, which is above that there. We've got the next one, which is up here. The next one up here. The next one up here. Uh, so you can see we're, we're kind of weeding out these moderate ones. These are okay, but these don't necessarily mean anything. These aren't divergent from what we're used to seeing. But when it starts breaking a little bit further up towards those, well, in this case, I'm looking at the Euro USD uh, on a 15 minute, but when it starts getting up towards those 10,000s, that's where it finds a bit of resistance and a bit of a turning point. But if it's a little bit underneath that, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a huge amount of volume 
it's just a larger amount of volume and probably a peak time. So when we're looking at these big, big volume nodes that stand out, I want the big ones that are just very, very obvious. Uh, so looking at all of those areas, we can then go back through and we can see where did the volume come in on every single one of these. So we've got the peak volume, which is on this big bear bar there. Not really a surprise, but let's get that across there. The peak volume came in right there. Fairly easy to see that one. Sometimes they make you work for it. Sometimes they don't. Uh, but that became a major zone of support for, well, support and resistance for a very long period of time. But before we, before we get ahead of ourselves here, let's look at the next volume node. The next one, I want to make sure that I don't include this previous bump here. Uh, that was at 815. That might have been news. That might have been something else going on. I just want the biggest volume that stands out. So I don't want to include that. Let's go over here. And this one might give us a few. Let's stack this up, get a little bit of a closer look. Looks like the majority of the volume is there. There's a little bit more underneath it. I think it's large enough. We can say that the POC, that's the largest point. Good enough right there. As the market continues back down, we can get another one on that drive lower right there. That was fairly obvious right there. Uh, and as we continue forward, we didn't really have any other levels for a while. There were some other pops in volume, but you can see how powerful these levels can become. It's ridiculous. Uh, they become monstrous zones of support and resistance over and over and over again. And when it finally does get through it, then it usually goes to the next level. And you can keep doing this over and over uh, while we're going through. Let's just keep marking them up and see uh, how long these levels can stay in play because that's the even crazier part. Uh, let's make this on the top. Fairly obvious. The big chunk of volume is here and here, but there are a couple extra little nodes in there that we could mark up. Uh, so there's a few, but the POC, if we're just sticking with the simplest approach, would be right there on that move. So that's the largest point in volume. And we've got another continuation back up. And this is when things start getting really interesting. We've got the biggest point in volume, and it's the biggest point in volume where we've already seen volume. <laughs> that is the previous volume node from before. This is further confirmation that this level might have a lot of oomph to it. And sure enough, we can see a monstrous rejection off of that zone. And that's why it's so interesting to go backward and see when these levels coincide with one another, how powerful they can be. And then as we move on to the final one in the sequence here, we've got another push all the way down here. And that's the one that we kind of started things off, but we can see the majority of volume came in right there, which I mean, realistically is basically just on top of the last one, same situation. And you can see when those volume areas stack up, they create really big zones of interest. This one uh, on the high actually broke through it a little bit. Uh, although we were seeing a lot of stacking going on and it did have some follow through when it came back, it broke through it first, trapped it and then dumped. Uh, and that's always something to pay attention to. But here again, we're just cycling off of another large volume node. Uh, and we're seeing some of the largest volume coming in to right in that same spot. You'd expect this area to become resistance. So very, very useful and interesting things to pay attention to and keep on your chart and keep your eyes on. But hopefully you found that useful, interesting, entertaining, something you can add to your trading tool belt. Like we always say, stay safe out there, keep those stops in play, and let the winners run. Until the next one, we'll see you all then. Thanks.